Yehova mulak. Allah mulamut. Yehova mulak. Ya mi? Evet. Yehova gadol. Makarian tios. Yehova yadonai. Yehova yelohi. Kurios tios penta kvita. Kurios tios pistos. Elde et Yehova, el emuna Yehova. Ibas Leon Kurios, Otios, O Pantacreto. Baslios, Baslion, Kai Kurios, Kurio. Yehova the Bar Halal, Elohim the Bar Halal. Yehova Elohim, Gadol Gadol Kebura. El Elohim Israel, Jesus Christos, Ton Christon Isun Ton Kurion, Kurion Mahagion Penta Greater, Kadol Kadol Kibura, Yehova Ishmael Khan, Yehova Shamma, El Makum Yehova, El Makum Yapa. Netzak Israel la Shaker Gava Gava Triembos Yehova Isus Christos Pantacreta Gadol Gadol Gibber Mororosh Nasa Elohim Elohim Eleila Shabbat Yehova Malak Yehova Malak Olam Olam Ad Yehova Eleheno Yehova Ekad, Gadol Gadol, Gebra. Zahan Logan, Ogar, Tautios, Dulas, Desmias, Despotes, Dikai Suni, and Jesus Christos, Kurion, 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 Hagion, 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 Numa, Penta Greater, Gadol Gadol. Yehova Ihe Elohim, Yehova Ihe Elohim, Ileila Shalot, Yehova Malak, Yehova Malak, Jesus Christos, Kadol Kadol, Gebra, Yehova, Yehova El, Yehova, Yehova. Rakum Shan Yehova El Arak Ape Rab Keset Emet Yehova Mine Mine Tikel Ufarsen Derek Emunabakar Mishpat Shabu The Megalogai of Yahweh El Elyon Elohim is always alive and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of the soul and the spirit and the joints and the marrow, and it is a critic of thoughts and intents of the heart. All scripture is God-breathed and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, and for instruction in righteousness, for training in righteousness. That the man of Lord God might be mature, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Study to show thyself a prudent to Lord God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, a rightly dividing the word of truth, a very accurately handling this very great, unique, infallible, and inherent great word of truth. Glory be to my Yahweh, Sid Keno, to the highest, and peace be unto the mankind on this earth. To those who believe in my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, by faith alone in Christ alone. Great goodness and goodwill towards them who love to walk breath by breath. In the cherishing and in this nurturing of this great and unique and elementary ministry of Lord God, the Holy Ghost. One more day being renewed in our lives to the praise of Lord God's glory. The greatest privilege 
which has been given for us to meditate upon the word of Lord God and to make known the world the importance of getting the work done of my Christ on this earth. No matter whatever it may cost, the first and the beautiful thing what we believers have to get back in this life is to make sure that you people are giving the work of Christ as number one priority. If we are not able to make up our life to give the work of Christ as number one priority, then for sure, dear brethren, we will be in that category of the world where Christ our Lord of God has no delight in them. The true source of your survival is to perform the will of Lord God the Father. The reason why Christ our Lord of God gives you this breath is nothing but to make sure that you are walking in the terms and conditions of my Christ. Apart from that, there is nothing on this earth that you can think that you have been able to survive. The only reason why Christ our Lord of God leads you as his flock, guiding you in the wilderness like a flock, is for very simple to make sure you are going to build up the glory and the excellency of my Christ on this earth. That's what we find over here in Isaiah chapter 35 in verse number 2 when he says the wilderness and the solitary place shall be glad for them the desert shall rejoice the blossom and blossom as the rose it shall blossom abundantly and rejoice even with joy and singing the glory of Lebanon shall be given unto it excellency of Carmel and Sharon they shall see the glory of the Lord and the excellency of our God. This is the one solid reason why we have been kept alive in the midst of such powers and crooked nation generations. Why have been given this privilege to strengthen our knees? Once again to confirm the feeble knees and strengthen our weak hands so that that a fearful heart shall be strong because Lord God the Father knows how to take vengeance. Lord God the Father knows how to pay the recompense because he comes to save you. Then the eyes of the blind shall be opened and the ears of the deaf shall be unstopped. Then shall the lame man leap as an heart and the tongue of the dumb sing. For in the wilderness shall waters break out the streams in the deserts and the patchy ground shall become a pool and the thirsty land springs of water in the habitation of dragons where each lay shall be grass with reeds and rushes and a highway shall there be a way which has been called the way of holiness the people who are unclean that's their soul is not been renovated the thought process of Bible doctrine the unclean shall not pass over it but it shall be for those, the way faring men, the men who have been called as the terms and conditions to be departing from the manner of life. The way faring men, the people who have left the real manner of life, the people who haven't understood what it is to join as disciple and to grow up into gravity, as such way faring men. And the people who are fools, the call to be every ill. And these fools are nothing but their brethren. These are the ones who make up in the Aleph energy not to be associated for discipleship program. So he said, these are fools, the wayfaring men. They shall be errors. So the people who have been there like wayfaring men, the people who have been there like fools, now they will not go for errors because they're going to have authority in the viewpoint of life as per the terms and conditions of Christ. Therefore, no lion shall be there, nor any ravenous breeze shall go up there. It shall not be found there, but who? Only the redeemed, the word gal. And the word for gal, the paid price. And today, what is the paid price which you have to pay? 
Build up your thought process like a discipleship program in Christ. The redeemed shall walk therein. Therefore he said, The ransomed of the Lord shall return and come to Zion with songs and everlasting joy. Upon their heads they shall obtain joy and gladness, and sorrow and, sing and sighing shall flee away. Because this is the triumph and glory of Christ when he comes. So the earth has to be filled with his glory and all the people shall see his excellency. And such a great life what Christ the Lord of God has designed for us to be doing for him on this earth. Then what it is we are wasting our time in not understanding the Lord's mind. So dear brethren, use the privacy of your priesthood to confess your sins through rebound. And let's come back and continue what Lord God the Father has prepared and kept for us on today's date of eternity past to the praise of His glory and His matchless, marvelous, infinite, divine, glorious grace. We shall continue after this prayer. Sanctify yourselves to look upon the great and unique pile of wonders of the Lord's mind. Infinitely divine Holy Father, once again coming into the grace of the Lord to learn the truth. Nothing on this earth, O Lord, seemeth more pleasurable for us apart from your word which have given for us to learn your mind. On this pilgrimage trip, O Lord, many things the world are looking. Apart from the only thing which they ought to look in understanding your mind. Let the Father give him this grace to learn your mind. And as we have come once again boldly unto the grace to learn your word, humbly in the presence of your mind, in the power of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, the things which thou hast prepared and kept for us on today's date of eternity past, as we learn them, we pray, Lord God, the Holy Ghost, to enlighten the talent and to bless us by this message, which thou hast prepared and kept for us on today's date of eternity past, the praise of your glory, in a matchless, marvelous, and grand, divine, glorious grace. In Christ's name, we ask, Lord, Lord. Amen. In Isaiah chapter 63, what we are able to look in verse number 14. As a beast goeth down into the valley, the Spirit of the Lord caused him to rest. So did you let thy people to make thyself a glorious name. That means the two categories of the people that are going to feel on this earth. The first one, a beast kind of category who have been driven by the thought process of the blood that goes on into them. They have been driven in such a way, in such a manner. And then he says, they speedily go into that valley. That is, their body from the rising of the sun till the going of the sun, they always have the viewpoint of this earth. Therefore, they have been like divided hope. And this divided plain or divided valley, what they have is nothing but they're going to be breaking up or cleaving up into those things which are not at all worthy. The beast always has this viewpoint. Therefore it is called as a beast. Because that beast always looks into the viewpoint of what we can call as vanity. That's what the beast does. So Lord of a God says, as the beast that goeth down into valley, so you people shall not be there. Because the Spirit of the Lord causes you to rest. That's the difference. That's the power. If we the church age have been taken up the ransom of Christ through sacrifice, we have been waiting for the power. But Lord God the Father has given power through Lord God the Holy Spirit through his mind so that we shall have power even our last enemy called as death. So we have nothing to worry. There may be many obstacles for us. But all those obstacles seem at nothing for us. Because we are having the word of Lord God as our only privilege, as our only strength, as our only standards of thinking. So we have nothing to worry. Because here he said, 
the spirit of the Lord our God is going to rest. It causes you to be rest. The word rest is called to be nakom. Therefore, anything that goes against you or against the word of Lord God, any power or any weapon that has been formed, they cannot go to succeed. That's what he meant to say in simple words. Therefore, he leads us like the flock in the wilderness, driving us to do the will of Lord God the Father every time. And that's his great intention for us. Every time, the intention of Lord God the Father is only one thing. Let them be fed with the proper word of Lord God. Let them be known with the proper intention of Bible doctrine. That's what we look in Isaiah, Psalms chapter 17 in verse number 52. He makes his people to go forth. The word to go forth over here, it has been called to be Nasa, to set into a journey. What sort of a journey? In spite of any pressure that could be, the vigor and valor should be associated to the viewpoint of Christ. Under any pressure that could come, the vigor and valor, the viewpoint of life should be associated for Christ. That's what he says. He makes his people to go forth like a sheep. The word sheep over here. In spite of any pressure what they have, they have the vigor and valor derived from Christ. This is the flock of the law. Therefore he compares us to his flock. As many people don't understand about this. They love to study the characters of that flock. What is that sheep or what is that goat? And the people in the world, they may compare Christians to flocks. But they don't understand why it has been called as a flock. A flock is a thing in spite of any pressure. It would always go to take up its pleasure and power from Christ. That's what we are. We get our directions from the word of Lord God in the controlling mentoring ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. In Acts chapter 16, though we have been having a great commission in Mark chapter 16 or Acts chapter 1 saying that go and make all the world the preaching in the word of Lord God, yet he says in Acts chapter 16, you shall not go now to the place of Ephesus or to the Asia. But the same thing he did again in Acts chapter 20 in a, in a, in a place for three years in the same place of in the provisions of Asia, Ephesus. He goes to preach the word of Lord God for three years. The same thing again. Furthermore, he continues to the seven churches of Asia in the book of Revolution. But that time it was restricted. Again, the book of same Acts, we look in chapter number 19, saying a man in Macedonia waiting and craving for the people to come there. And here, dear brethren, we look. The simple point which are very, very essential under the guidelines of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, to know as a flock, if he's been leading us, we completely come to the power of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, through his word. That's the point over here, what we call as a flock. Let it be any pressure that may come in their life. They have only one source of power. And that one sorts of power is Yehovah Elohim. Manifested in the flesh, Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, revealing now in the Spirit, Lord God, the Holy Spirit, the three being one together as, in essence, as Trinity, but manifestations of them in the realm of a human mind to be understanding what it is. He gives them the thinking what we can call Father planned, Son executed, Holy Spirit of the Lord and the God revealed. But today, dear brethren, people are not at all interested to call themselves as flock. The shepherd feeds the flock. The duty of the shepherd is to give them right Bible doctrine. That's what the shepherd does. He has no other work apart from feeding you the word of Lord God. He has no time for any other thing apart from feeding the flock to make the flock to see any pressure in life. Get back to the vigor and valor of Christ. That's what the real work of the pastor teacher is all about. To cause them to rest in the spirit of the Lord. 
And the Spirit of the Lord is called to be the voice of the Holy Spirit, which goes to teach us many things, which goes to lead us in many things. Even from the minute till to the major, everything in the Spirit of the Lord of God leads us. So that the name of my Christ, my Lord, my Rock God, is not being blasphemed in the Gentiles. Therefore he said, don't be like a beast which goes to the valley which goes to have the difference, but rather make the Spirit of the Lord of a God to rest upon you. If you're having been to be rest the Spirit of the Lord of a God, you will be like a sheep that have been taken care by Lord God by guiding you, making your vigor and valor to build up your potentiality in Christ. You have pressure upon your vigor and valor, your vigor and valor will be building up your potentiality in Christ. So you can understand. Where does he guide them? He guides them in the standards of wilderness. The midbar, where there is no word of Lord God, he guides you there to find the word of Lord God. Why? So that you people can become his flock. And here the word for flock is called to be edir. But when he leads the people like sheep, that is called the word over there as Tesson. As sheep, it is called to be Tesson. That is, no matter what may be the pressure, they get into the vigor and valor of Christ. And then he goes to build the vigor and valor to build up a wall of fortification in the Lord God. And then he leads them through the word in the place where there is no word, like his flock. That is, the viewpoint of the life. In every thought what they get, they get into captivity for Christ by renovating their thinking as per the terms and conditions of the Lord's mind. And this flock will be the place where he said, the process of removing what is unnecessary. And what does he want to bring? He wants to bring out order. That which is unnecessary. You want to prune it off. And what does you want to bring? You want to bring order. And then, dear brother, many people don't understand about these things. He guides them through the wilderness. He leads them to the wilderness. Why? You want to get some order. A proper procedure, a proper thinking that can be the terms and conditions of Christ. Therefore, the viewpoint of them will be to get every thought into captivity for Christ to be renovated as per the terms and conditions of the Lord's mind. That's what he does. But many people are not at all able to look upon those terms. What is being needed, how it is being needed. And yet they don't go to be like a sheep. They don't come to be in the flock. The Lord God, the Father wants to guide you. He wants to help you out. You people are not coming to be as the things pertaining to the Holy Spirit of the Lord our God to rest upon you, but you're becoming like a beast which goes to vanish. Therefore he said, in the size of chapter 63, in verse number 14, the beast that goeth down into the valley. Don't be like that. But rather be the spirit of Lord God causing you to rest so that he can now lead you. Again the word Naga. He can make up the vigor and valor to develop the things of you to build in the terms and conditions of Christ so that he can develop, he can lead thy people and then he wants those people to be like a glorious name, a name what we can call to be fruitful in Christ. The same thing what we find in Psalms chapter 78, which is said over here in verse number 52. He goes to lead us in the terms and conditions of Christ. So he said, but made his own people to go forth like sheep and guides them. The same thing. When the Spirit of the Lord of God has been resting upon you, he guides you. 
he makes the things to happen he makes the things to rest upon you and so that what he wants to do he want a mic to be guiding and make a people to be glorious ones to Christ and you cannot achieve that glorious targets in the lord if you're not been there in the fellowship of lord god the holy spirit so dear brethren he goes to guide them in the wilderness like a flock a deer which goes to make the view point to get every thought renovating in the standards and conditions of bible doctrine therefore the process of removing what is unnecessary to bring about the order such as the flock but today you find the church doesn't have that order the order of the things which have to be word by word line by line precept upon precept iota upon iota and carrier upon carrier they don't have that order therefore you can find the pastors in probes chapter 16 which we can learn from verse number 13 the king's heart he says over here the king's delight is in the righteous lips a king is compared to now christ his wrath son approval upon whom the lips which are righteous what are these righteous lips under any pressure they make up their every thought from the rising of the sun till the going of the sun to be for christ and the people love him that speaketh right thing and it's a great pleasure to be a real bona fide gifted pastor teacher when you're having first of all the approval of lord god and the pleasure of the people to see that they love and they listen to the truth because they change therefore as a pastor i've been especially taken into consideration for double honor and people may think the double honor they'll get great reward this and that no the double honor is that first god the father has been pleased second the people love it because they want to change people are in search of the truth people are in search of knowing the truth people are waiting though may not be believers but unbelievers they are really searching for the truth let your holy man of rock of life be manifested for them in reality of the truth and these people they're not at all able to be happy the reasons are very very simple because they want to know the truth the truth alone will set them free nothing else than that and people they're considering themselves to be truth but which is no truth at all and as christians if you don't give the truth you will be held responsible for it so the double horn of for here or here for for a man righteous lips you have to be king's approval is there for you and the people love them that they love to speak the truth the word right things is called to be a share a rumbleical core of relationship with lord god the father day by day the standards of renovating your thought process in the terms and conditions day by day what lord god the father wants for us in this church age therefore he said the enemy look at upon the standards where you people might be interested in knowing what we can call in simple terms the people what they want they want to say no to bible doctrine but christ the lord of god would say go to the church where you can get right bible doctrine learn the word of lord god so that that word of lord god alone can set you free therefore the first test for the pastor teacher habakkuk chapter 2 in verse number 1 so that whether you are able to stand the charge given to you whether you are able to face it whether you are able to take it and then if you are able to take upon the charge which Christ the Lord of God has given for you the tokeka the correction what you take after receiving that correction he said write the vision make it plain and then he said let the men run it when they read it 
But if you people are not able to recognize that vision of the Lord, the purpose of the Lord, then your lips are not speaking truth. It's not a pleasure to the king on your part, neither to the people to have the approval, saying that he has been sent by the Lord. Therefore, in contrary to what the world looks, world looks for cheap substitutes, And in those cheap substitutes, they love to be slaves for the lusts rather than serving Christ in truth. Dear brethren, the things what we have are very, very important for us. Day by day, the privilege and the personality what Christ the Lord of God has given is to walk in the truth. And if you still say no to the truth, if you're still saying no to Bible doctrine, if you're still saying the things which are contrary to the word of Lord God and living to the life that which is contrary, really, dear brother, the things which Christ the Lord of God has given for us, if you don't value them, you'll be facing a lot many problems and you'll not even understand why those problems are. As we have read in Isaiah chapter 68 in verse number 63 in verse number 8, emphasizing the point, you start to grieve Lord God the Holy Spirit. And when you grieve Lord God the Holy Spirit, He shall become your enemy and He fights against you. Therefore, Remember the days of old, Moses and his people saying, Where is he that brought up them out of the sea with the shepherd of his flock? Where is he that put his Holy Spirit within him, that led them by the right hand of Moses with his glorious arm, dividing the water before them to make himself an everlasting name, that led them through the deep as an horse in the wilderness, that they should not stumble, and therefore he said, Don't be like a beast that goeth into the valley. The Spirit of the Lord God resteth upon you. He guided thy people, his people, to build up for himself a name which is going to produce the fruit. Therefore he said, Look down from heaven and behold from the habitation of the holiness of the glory. Where is the zeal and the strength, the sounding of the bowels and of the mercies toward me? Are they restrained? Doubtless you are our father, though Abraham be ignorant of us, Israel acknowledges not. Thou, O Lord, art our Father, our Redeemer. Thy name is from everlasting. Therefore he said, O Lord, why hast thou made us to error from thy ways and harden our heart from thy fear? Written for the servant's sake, the tribes of thine inner tents. Thy people of thy holiness have possessed it but for a little while. Our adversaries have trodden down thy sanctuary. We are thine, though never bearest rule, over them, they were not called by thy name. Again, beginning with chapter number 64, he said, Oh, that they would rend the heavens, that they would come down, that the mountains might flow down at the presence. As well, the melting fire burneth, the fire causes the waters to boil, to make thy name known to thine adversaries, that the nations may tremble at thy presence. Because he has the things to soak, to make known through the world. Through his word, what a great importance of life we have in Christ and this great and unique privilege of this church. So, dear brethren, think about these issues. Since don't live like a beast, make the Holy Spirit of the Lord of God to dwell in you, and you can survive this great spiritual life. So, which way you want to go, you decide as we shall come back and continue. As Lord God, the Holy Ghost leadeth us to the praise of His glory in His matchless, marvelous, infinite, divine, glorious praise. Infinitely divine, Holy Father, we are grateful and thankful for the privilege of the Lord to be the fellowship through the Word. We pray that Lord God, the Holy Ghost, would enlighten and challenge and bless us by this message. So that Lord, each and everything, Father, You alone will be glorified through our lives. As You have said, the righteous lips are King's delight. And the people love they that speaketh 
ya share kind of talk in your presence help us to lead according to your terms o lord this flock which is thy sheep to your categories of which you have called us in order to pass to be guided in the midst of such a wilderness through your word in the fellowship of lord god the holy spirit Jesus and Father we pray that Lord God the Holy Ghost would enlighten and challenge and bless us by this message in Christ's name we ask for the Lord amen